so hello everyone and a very good morning to all of you welcome back once again to another class of pib 247 in today's session we are going to talk about the pib news from 8 to 9th of uh, april 2023 so yeah let's begin with the session without any delay and let's talk about the very first question which is about the nps traders scheme now you must be wondering which scheme is this nps traders you must have heard about pradhan mantri pradhan mantri lagu vyapari mandan yojana so this nps trader scheme is nothing but pradhan mantri lagu vyapari mandan yojana right so Please don't get confused if you get this name NPS traders in your examination. It is Pradhan Mantri Lagu Vyapari Mandan Yojda only. Right. Now you must be wondering why we are discussing this scheme today because it is, it is an old scheme. It was launched in 2019. But remember, this scheme, uh, with respect to this scheme, a news a reply has been submitted in the parliament. That's why we are discussing this scheme. Right. So let's, uh, the question is which of the following are statements are correct about this scheme. So let's talk about the scheme, then we will come back to this question. So what is the objective of the scheme? You don't have to remember the objective of the scheme ever in any scheme. If you know, if you understand the name of that scheme, right? So what is the name? Pradhan Mantri Lagu Vyapari. What is the meaning of Lagu Vyapari? Small businessman, small trader, right? Mandhan, wherever you see this word Mandhan, Mandhan means money with, or you can say money with uh, uh, respect. So what is money with respect? When you will get money with, with respect, you retire. Ho so what is the retirement benefit? Pension. So Lagu Vyapari Mandan Yojana, it is a retirement, it is a pension benefit scheme for small traders and that is the objective of the scheme, right? Pension benefit scheme for small traders, right? This is all. It was launched in the year 2019 and any small trader who is in the age of age group of 18 years and 40 years 18 साल से 40 साल के बीच में कोई भी small trader है that person can uh, avail the facility of this scheme that person can join this pension benefit scheme right along with this condition that trader must have GST of course GST number उसके पास होना चाहिए and the turnover of that small trader should be below 1.5 crores so these are the two eligibility to join the scheme number one is age right minimum age to enter the scheme is 18 years and maximum age to enter the scheme is 40 years right and the trader should have a gst number and the annual turnover should be below rupees 1.5 crores right now talking more about it so who are eligible ineligible kon -kon honge? so any member who is already availing the similar benefits under any of the scheme like epfo esic Employees Provident Fund Organization, Employee State Insurance, uh, uh, in, Employees State Insurance Act, NPS, Pradhan Mantri, Shram Yogi Mandan, or an income taxpayer. If that person, if that small trader is an income taxpayer, then also he is not eligible to get the benefit of the scheme. Because if he is an income taxpayer, he can manage to arrange, you know, to, to arrange the pension, uh, to arrange the retirement money for himself, right? Contribution. If the person, if the beneficiary enters the at the age of 18, then he or she has to contribute rupees 55. And if the person enters the scheme at the age of 40, then he or she has to contribute rupees 200, right? And same amount is given by government as the matching contribution. Matlab, agar ek person 55 rupees de raha hai, to sarkar bhi 55 rupees degi, right? To ek saal mein kitna contribution ho jayega? Ek to 10 rupees, all right? Now, minimum monthly pension that the person that the beneficiary will get after attaining age of 60 years is rupees 3000. 3000 per month ka pension milega on attaining the age of 60 years under Pradhan Mantri Lagu Vyapari Manthan Yojana. Right? Now, talking more about it. So, remember the pension fund manager, this scheme, this scheme's pension fund is being managed by LIC, Life Insurance Corporation of India. Now, what happens if the subscriber dies? Agar subscriber ki death jati hai, to kya hoga? then spouse shall be entitled to receive 50% of the pension. Let's say any subscriber dies after the age of 60 years and he was getting rupees 3000 as the pension. Then the spouse shall get rupees 1500 as the pension, right? Family pension ki form mein unko 1500 rupees Now what happens on disablement before uh, attaining 60 years of age? Now let's say there is a subscriber who was uh, regularly contributing 
to this to the pension fund of this scheme now any accident happens and he got disabled what disabled ho gaya and he is not able to contribute anymore then there are two option with the spouse jo spouse hoga us beneficiary ka uske paas do option hai number 1 he or she can continue with the scheme with the payment of regular contribution if the spouse is also working then he or she can continue the scheme by regularly contributing uh, the contribution amount into the scheme right but there is another option also the spouse can also exit the scheme by receiving the share of beneficiary's contribution share of beneficiary contribution milega sarkar wala nahi milega of course why would government give its contribution back uh, to the beneficiary so the share of contribution of the beneficiary with interest as actually earned by the pension fund or saving bank interest rate whichever is higher you got my point or not let's say 100 rupees jama hue hain right let's say any person got disabled at the age of 59 years and he has he had joined the scheme at the age of 40 years so before 60 years uski disablement ho gayi right he got disabled before 60 years of age now his this person let's say this person is x this person spouse has two options ek to ye wala ya to wo continue rakhe dusre wale mein kya hoga let's say 100 rupees jama hue the theek hai 100 rupees jama hue the aur is 100 rupees ne jo pension fund se interest earn kiya tha the interest earned through the pension fund was let's say at the rate of 6% theek hai total total bata raha hu main 6% pakad lete hain to kitne rupaye 6 rupaye theek hai and let's say the saving bank interest rate the prevailing saving bank interest rate at the time of this jab ye ho raha hoga right at the time of this situation is let's say 5% so how much interest will be there 5 rupees so whichever is higher 6 rupees so this spouse will get 106 rupees from the government of india side through the ministry of labor and employment and yes this scheme is being implemented by ministry of labor and employment all right so i hope you got this point now moving ahead and talking more about this scheme so what are the benefits on leaving the pension scheme agar koi is scheme ko chhodta hai beech mein before attaining the 60 years of age so kya hoga so option number 1 if the person exits within less than 10 years right from the date of joining the scheme right from the date of joining the scheme if the person exit the scheme within less than 10 years then what will happen share of subscriber contribution with saving bank's interest rate shall be credited back to the subscribe theek hai saving bank interest rate milega isme yaad rakhna number 2 if the person exit after equal to or more than 10 years but before attaining the age of 60 years right exit after equal to or more than 10 years of age but before attaining 60 years of age then what will happen the share of subscriber contribution along with interest as actually earned by the pension fund or the saving bank's interest rate which ever is higher un dono mein se zyada hoga right number 3 after death of the subscriber and his or her spouse ab subscriber aur spouse agar dono hi mar jate hain to kya hoga then what will happen the fund the corpus shall be credited back to the fund and there is no provision of any kind of nominee under this particular scheme all right now what if the subscriber defaults in his or her contribution so if a subscriber has not paid the contribution continuously he or she can continue can continue the scheme by paying whatever the dues are along with the penalty if any agar koi sarkar penalty lagati hai to wo usko dena padega and he or she can continue with the scheme theek hai ji so that is all about the scheme and remember there are there is very similar scheme pradhan mantri shram yogi mandhan yojana all the provisions are absolutely the same all the provisions are absolutely the same except that eligibility wala thing because shram yogi is for laborers shram yogi is for laborers and of course laborers cannot have uh, the, that condition of annual turnover of less than 1.5 crores cannot be put on the laborers theek hai baaki sab kuch same hai right and then of course we have pradhan mantri kisan mandhan yojana which is also a similar scheme theek hai all the provisions are same but remember shram yogi mandhan yojana and lagu vyapari mandhan yojana are being implemented by ministry of labor and employment while किसान मानधन योजना इज बीइंग इंप्लीमेंटेड बाय मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ एग्रीकल्चर एंड फार्मर्स वेलफेयर ऑल राइट सो आई होप गाइस दिस स्कीम इज क्लियर एंड दिस इज द डिटेल अप टू व्हिच यू हैव टू गो इफ यू वांट टू अटेम्प्ट ऑल द क्वेश्चंस कमिंग फ्रॉम द गवर्नमेंट स्कीम्स इन आरबीआई ग्रेड बी एंड नवाद ग्रेड एग्जामिनेशन ऑल राइट एंड नाउ लेट्स कम बैक टू द क्वेश्चन 
So we have to identify the correct statement. It was launched in 2019 for welfare of traders, including the retail shopkeepers, self-employed person, Sayed. Under it, entry age of beneficiary should be between 18 and 40 years. An annual turnover is less than 1.5 crores. Bilkul sahi baat hai, no problem. It is a voluntary and co-contribution pension scheme with 70% monthly contribution payable by beneficiary and the rest is paid by a central government. Not 70%. 70% nahi hai. Sarkar matching contribution deti hai. Whatever is being paid by the uh, subscriber, the beneficiary, that same amount is contributed by the government of India. Its subscribers, after attaining the age of 60 years, are eligible for minimum assured pension of 10,000 per month. Of course, 10,000 per month Sargar pension nahi dene wali hai, itne bade bade khwab mat rakho. And of course, kyun degi Sargar? Sargar ko 140 crore logo ko manage karna hai, sir kuch logo ko nahi karna hai. In case subscriber dies, the spouse of the beneficiary is entitled to receive 50% of the pension. Ye baat sahi hai. So 1, 2 and 5 is the correct answer, option A. Alright, option A is the correct answer. Let's move ahead to the next question, which is about the biotech Kisan scheme. Now, this is again not a new scheme. It is in news again because of a reply submitted by the Ministry of Science and Technology uh, in the parliament. Right. So we need to identify the incorrect statement this time about biotech Kisan and Kisan here stands for uh, biotech to biotech. Hai. Kisan stands for Krishi Innovation Science Application Network. Do remember the full form of Kisan as well. Krishi Innovation Science Application Network and as the name suggests, this scheme, just ka objective hoga, wo kya hona chahiye? Right, let's try to uh, identify its objective from its name. Krishi, Krishi means what? Agriculture or farming, right? Innovation, science application, which means some kind of innovation is being done, some kind of, you know, new technologies, new innovation is being done under this scheme and that new innovation is applied in the farms. Right, so that is the main objective of this scheme. So let's talk about it. To work with small and marginal farmers, especially the women farmers, for better agricultural productivity with the use of innovation and technology. So that um, that is all I told you. That is the objective of this scheme. It was launched in the year 2017 and it is being implemented by Ministry of Science and Technology through its Department of Biotechnology. Okay, ji. Talking more about it. Remember, this scheme is nothing but a scientist and farmer partnership scheme. This is a scientist and farmer partnership scheme hai, where the Ministry of Science and Technology is partnering with the farmers to connect science laboratories with the farmers to find out innovative solutions and technologies to be developed and applied in the farms. All right. Now, it provides funding to establish biotech Kisan hub in each of the 15 agroclimatic zones of the country. This is something which is very important. In each of the 15 agroclimatic zones of the country, biotech Kisan hub shall be established under this scheme. And these hub centers network by developing strong linkages for uh, top quality science institutions, state agriculture, university, Krishi, Vigyan, Kendras, etc. Right? So, in this scheme, there is no need and let's identify the incorrect statement. It was launched in 2017 to work with small and marginal farmers, especially women farmers for better agriculture, productivity through scientific intervention. It is being implemented by Ministry of Agriculture and Farmers Welfare. No, it is being implemented by Ministry of Science and Technology and not the Ministry of Agriculture and Farmers Welfare. So this is incorrect. Now, please, there can be a confusion with this word Kisan and Krishi, right? That this scheme must be implemented by agriculture and farmers welfare. But always remember, there is also the word innovation and science application, right? So always, and of course, biotech. So biotech, I ask Reflo, that this is being implemented by Department of Biotechnology, which of course works under the Ministry of Science and Technology headed by Dr. Chitendra Singh. Let's move ahead to question number three. In which year rice fortification program was launched with an outlay of rupees 2700 crores per annum. But before moving ahead to the rice fortification program, let's try and understand what is the meaning of fortification. So fortification guys is nothing but addition of micronutrients to the food items so that we can enhance its nutrient values, right? That is the meaning of fortification. So it is the process of adding essential micronutrients, vitamins, minerals to food to improve its nutritional quality and provide a public health benefit with minimal risk to health. That is the meaning of fortification. I hope the meaning is clear. 
and again rice fortification is adding minerals and vitamins to the rice right to enhance its nutrient values and generally in india we are doing rice fortification by adding iron folic acid and vitamin b12 to it so that we can reduce the incidences of anemia in the country okay to face the challenge of anemia we are doing the rice fortification and of course to enhance uh, the nutrient values of rice okay now rice fortification program two phases uh, have been implemented already in phase one this was done through icds integrated child development scheme and pm poshan scheme which earlier pm poshan is is nothing but mid day meal right mid day meal ka hi naya naam hai pm poshan hai do remember that the phase one was implemented during 21 22 and nearly 17.51 lakh million ton rice had been distributed in the states and uts right <clears throat> you don't have to remember these words these numbers koi zarurat nahi hai in phase 2 105 lmt of fortified rice was lifted targeted for pds distribution in 27 states and uts again you don't have to remember this number koi zarurat nahi hai in addition about 29 lmt was lifted by states or uts under icds and pm portion making a total of about 134 lmt fortified rice theek hai ye sare numbers aapko yaad karne ki zarurat nahi hai i have put these numbers so that we can understand that what government has done in phase 1 and phase 2 of rice fortification program theek hai now let's quickly jump to the rice fortification program remember it was launched last year uh, in the year 2022 and the targets are to be completed by the year 2024 in a year 2700 crore will be given to this scheme and all this amount the entire amount shall be borne by the central government only there is no take off any state government or ut government in it right and this will be given through the subsidy right right as a part of subsidy ye outlet diya jayega under this program the fortified rice rice is supplied through various channels like targeted public distribution system under nfsa pm portion which is nothing but mid day meal icds other welfare schemes of the central government and it is being this fortification program uh, two phases have already been implemented the third phase the third phase will be implemented by march 2024 by march 2024 and all the districts and all the areas jo ki bach gaye hain that shall be covered in the phase 3 of rice fortification program theek hai ji so that is all about this news and now let's come back to the question so question is very basic 2022 is the correct answer that is the launch year of rice fortification program let's move ahead to question number 4 which of the following statements are correct about the national startup awards so are the awards uh, being given no the awards have not been given only the invitations right applications have been invited under the national startup awards सो एप्लीकेशन आ गई है तो चलो नेशनल स्टार्ट अवार्ड के बारे में पढ़ लेते हैं फिर जब अवार्ड्स अनाउंस होंगे तो दोबारा पढ़ लेंगे देर इज नो प्रॉब्लम इन दैट सो द नेशनल स्टार्ट अप अवार्ड द फर्स्ट एडिशन वॉज लॉन्च इन दर टू थाउजेंड एंड ट्वेंटी एंड दिस विल बी द फोर्थ एडिशन द ऑब्जेक्टिव बिहाइंड गिविंग दीज अवार्ड इज टू रिवॉर्ड एंड रिकोगनाइज दी आउटस्टैंडिंग स्टार्टअप दी आउटस्टैंडिंग इनोवेशन दी आउटस्टैंडिंग ऑन्टरप्रिनरशिप स्किल्स अक्रॉस दी कंट्री द नोडल मिनिस्ट्री टू गिव टू गिव दीज अवार्ड is the ministry of commerce and industry and specifically if i talk about the department so that's department of promotion of industry and internal trade dpiit all right now in the 2023 edition which will be the fourth edition there the awards will be given across 20 categories from various different areas right and in each category rupees 10 lakh will be awarded to the winning startup and along with this cash prize the winners will be provided with the hand holding support from the government of india the incubation support the accelerator support the market access support jitna bhi sarkar se ban padega wo sab kuch diya jayega to the winners theek hai ji so that is all and now let's identify the correct statement it was launched in 2020 by ministry of skill development and entrepreneurship no ministry of commerce and industry why would ministry of skill development and entrepreneurship launch the national startup awards so this is incorrect In 2023 edition, startups will be awarded across 30 categories. 20 categories are 30 नहीं है, तो ये भी incorrect हो गया. One winning startup in each of the 
2023 award categories will be awarded cash prize of rupees 10 lakh ye baat bilkul sahi hai and winners and finalists will be also provided with exclusive hand holding support etc this is also correct so we need to identify the correct statement which means 3 and 4 will be the correct answer option c and let's talk about question number 5 then international big cats alliance was launched recently during the program commemoration of 50 years of project tiger so i hope you guys have heard about project tiger which has completed 50 years of its implementation so which of the following statement is our correct about ibca which was launched during this uh, program commemoration of 50 years of project tiger international big cats alliance is the initiative which has been launched but before moving ahead let's talk about the project tiger project tiger kya hai project tiger remember guys uh, to maintain the viable population of tigers by protecting and conserving them project tiger was launched in the year 1973 project tiger was launched in the year 1973 by the government of india through the ministry of environment forest and climate change this project tiger is being implemented by national tiger conservation authority national tiger conservation authority which is a statutory body under wildlife protection act of 1972 right wildlife protection act of 1972 may ca is a statutory body this is chaired by the union minister of environment forest and climate change minister of environment forest and climate change is the chairperson of ntca right now <clears throat> talking about the tiger reserves so there are total 54 tiger reserves in the country the 54th one is guru ghasi das national park and uh, tamor pingla wildlife sanctuary together they have become a tiger reserve and they are located in Chhattisgarh, the 54th one, right? And the first tiger reserve in the country was Bandipur. Bandipur tiger reserve was the first one. Bandipur is in Karnataka, of course. And yeah, what is the IUCN status of tigers? Endangered. Endangered and the highest number of tigers in India we found in Madhya Pradesh. Madhya Pradesh mein sabse zyada milte. And of course, Tiger Day, World Tiger Day is observed on 29th of July every year. So I hope this is clear. So now 50 years have been completed and on the uh, occasion of completion of 50 years, some initiatives have been launched, which are international big cats alliance. So of course, as the name says, it is an alliance of the big cats of the seven big cats. So it has been launched with focus on the protection and conservation of seven major big cats of the world, which are tiger, lion, puma, jaguar, cheetah, leopard and snow leopard. India has five uh, big cats in its wild except pumas and jaguars pumas and jaguar ke alawa maare paas paancho hai Thikai? the conservation and protection of these major cats will be done in collaboration with the membership of 97 range of countries which harbors uh, these species and it will provide a short support over 5 years with guaranteed funding of over rupees 800 crore 800 crore se zada isme kharch kiya jayega right now publication, there was a publication that was launched, Amrit Kalka Vision for Tiger Conservation, which was nothing but a summary report on the fifth cycle of management effective evaluation of Tiger Reserve, right? And there was a release of commemorative coin, a commemorative coin be released kiya gaya hai. And finally, the tiger numbers have been de uh, declared by the government of India. And now in the year 2022, we have 3167 tigers in the country. So that's a very good news for all of us. This number, <coughs> you must remember, this is the very, very important number 3167. All right, guys, now let's identify the <coughs> correct statement about IBCA. It is being launched with focus on the protection and conservation of five major big cats of the world. Is that so? No, all the seven major big cats. So this is incorrect. It will be done in collaboration, membership of 97 range of countries. Yes. This is correct. And it will provide a short support over five years with guaranteed sub funding of over rupees 800 crores. So this is also correct. Which means option C is the correct answer. Two and three only. Moving ahead to the question number six, uh, which is the question in short. So now let's talk about the questions in short, which do not need much explanation, but don't try to believe or think that these questions are not important. You must think that these questions are not important. 
राइट इट इज नॉट लाइक दैट बहुत सारे इंपॉर्टेंट क्वेश्चन इसमें भी है ठीक है एंड इनफैक्ट सारे इंपॉर्टेंट है अगर इंपॉर्टेंट ना होते एंड इफ दीज क्वेश्चन वुड नॉट है एग्जामिनेशन बाय आई एम डिस्कसिंग हेयर राइट मैं डिस्कस ही नहीं करता ऑफकोर्स एंड इफ यू वॉन्ट टू है PDF of this session, you can join the Telegram channel. The link is provided in the description. Question number six. Digi Locker launched in 2015 aims to digitally empower citizen by providing access to authentic digital document uh, to citizens' digital document wallet. So we all know Digi Locker. You must be using the Digi Locker, which is nothing but a digital locker where we can put all the uh, important documents in the digital format. So. It is a flagship initiative of Ministry of Electronics and IT. Very easy question. Option D is the correct answer. What target has been set by the government to increase the share of natural gas in primary energy mix in India from current 6.5 percent by the year 2030? This question we have discussed a lot of times. But ठीक है पहले discuss किया था for the new people जो कि आजकल में join हुए हैं. They should also know that. The government has set a target to increase the share of natural gas to 15 percent, to 15 percent uh, in the primary energy mix in India from the current 6.5 percent. So the correct answer is again option D. Question number eight: How much FDI in space sector in the area of satellites establishment and operations at present is allowed through government route only? So through government route only in the स्पेस सेक्टर इन द एरिया ऑफ सैटेलाइट एस्टैब्लिशमेंट ऑपरेशन 100 परसेंट एफ डी आई इज अलाउड ऑप्शन ई इज द करेक्ट आंसर क्वेश्चन नंबर नाइन इंपॉर्टेंट क्वेश्चन है मैन ग्रोथ इनिशियटिव फॉर शोर लाइन हैबिटार्ट एंड टैंजिबल इनकम विच इन शॉर्ट इज मिस्टी एंड स्कीम एज बिन अनाउंस इन द बजट ट्वेंटी थ्री ट्वेंटी फोर इट एनवाइस टू कॉम्प्रिहेंसिवली एक्सप्लोर द पॉसिबल एरिया फॉर डेवलपमेंट ऑफ मैन ग्रोव कवरिंग अप्रोक्सीमेटली फाइव फोर्टी किलोमीटर स्क्वायर स्प्रेडिंग अक्रॉस How many states and UTs during five years, starting from financial year 23-24? So this will be done in 11 states and two UTs. And yet, two UTs, who are they? I was not able to find this. But okay, as soon as it gets, I will tell you the name of all these 11 states and two UTs. Don't you worry about that. So 11 states and two UTs is the correct answer. Option C. Question number 10. Where has the Ministry of Fisheries, Animal Husbandry, and Dairying? headed by purushottam rupala and icar central institute for research on cattle merit organized pashu pradarshini and krishi mela which is animal exhibition and agriculture fair remember this was organized in muzaffar nagar muzaffar nagar option d is the correct answer question number 11 very very important which of the following utilities have been declared odf plus and their all villages are odf plus model category very very important So there are three UTs, which are Andaman and Nicobar Islands, Lakshadweep and Dadar and Nagar Haveli and Daman and Diu. These are the three UTs which have been declared ODF plus, and all their villages are ODF plus model category. So one, three, and five is the correct answer. See how much important this question is. This is very very important question. Question number twelve, and this yeah question number twelve. Pay ajate. Ministry of Social Justice and Empowerment, headed by Dr. Virendra Kumar, has inaugurated Composite Regional Centre in Chhatrapur, Madhya Pradesh. It will cater to the rehabilitation rehabilitation services for how many categories of PWD? So there are twenty one categories according to PWD Act, types of person with disabilities Act, and this centre will also cater to the rehabilitation of all the PWD categories, and that's why the correct answer is option B. And the last question for today, Ministry of Railways, in collaboration with which organization, has recently organized the high-level conference on accelerating rail digital transformation in Asia and Pacific region in New Delhi. Right. So this uh, was United Nations Economic and Social Commission for Asia and Pacific, which is headquartered in Bangkok, and it was established way back in the year 1947. All right. Option C is the Correct answer. All right, so that is all for today's class. I hope all the questions and their explanations are clear. If you have any doubts, you can ask me in the comment section. Thank you so much for watching. Goodbye. Take care and God bless.